I think we're going to learn 20 or maybe 30 or more GRE relevant words from this New York Times review of Pashinko, which is a drama on American TV, on Apple TV+. As with all the videos in this series, I think it's a wonderful way to learn new words, seeing them in the context of an article or a book or an essay. And as you can see, I'm deriving them from The Guardian and New York Times, which are top quality resources to learn advanced English. Let's get into it. Pashinko Review, K-drama, American style. The K prefix, by the way, means to do with career. So K-pop, Korean pop, K-drama, Korean drama. Min Jin Lee's best-selling novel about the harsh, the hard lives of Koreans living in Japan is turned into a glossy, a shiny, brilliant family saga for Apple TV+. A saga, by the way, is a long-running story. It comes from Scandinavian or Viking tales that would describe generations and generations of individuals. So a long-running story is a saga. So it's turned into a shiny family saga. Here are two of the stars. Minha Kim and Lee Minho as Sunja and Hansu in the Apple TV Plus series Pachinko, which has a more contemporary sensibility. Contemporary means modern, to do with the present day, not the past. And sensibility is taste or feeling. So it's got a more modern taste than the original novel on which it's based. Two new words there, contemporary sensibility. By Mike Hale. In Japan, millions of people are addicted to the pinball-like arcade game Pachinko. Around the world, millions more may soon find themselves addicted to a soapy, bittersweet television series called Pachinko. Soapy here means like a television soap opera, full of drama every single episode, every single moment. And bittersweet means at first taste, it kind of tastes sweet and pleasant, and then there's a bitter, dour aftertaste that doesn't taste as good. So usually if something is nice in the moment, but has a negative onward connotation, then you call it bittersweet. It could be a food item or a life event. So millions more may find themselves addicted to a soapy, bittersweet television series. Just as pachinko parlor owners delicately, carefully, adjust their devices, pins and cups to keep gamblers in their seats. The makers of Pachinko have expertly tweaked. That means modified in a small way. Not changing everything, just changed a little bit. They've tweaked something. Have expertly tweaked the machinery of their story to produce a guaranteed crowd pleaser. A crowd pleaser is something that pleases the masses of people watching. Maybe not the expert critics, but the average person. Premiering Friday on Apple TV Plus with three of its eight episodes, the series is based on the 2017 bestseller by Min Jin Lee, sometimes faithfully, more often with a tenuous connection. So faithfully means sticking to the same story, same details as the book, whereas when it says more often with a tenuous connection, tenuous means weak and indirect. So maybe the series was very different or made up new details or was only loosely connected to the book's events, themes and tone. So faithfully sticking by it in detail, tenuous, loosely and weakly not sticking by it. More often it wasn't sticking by the book. Opening with the portentous line, that's ominous or foreboding. History has failed us, but no matter. Lee's novel chronicled, recorded the history of, the harsh existence of four generations, remember it's a saga, so multiple generations, of four generations of a Korean family living in a fiercely racist Japan, relegated, pushed down to poverty and unable, because of the discriminatory, prejudice against one group, laws and international politics, to return home. So unable to return home. Their fortunes, if not their status, finally began to change when one of them becomes a pachinko man, a business open to ethnic Koreans because of its unsavoury associations. Unsavoury originally meant to do with food. You know when you savour food, you really enjoy it? 
If it's unsavoury, it has an unpleasant taste. But now it can also mean people or activities. If a person is unsavoury, maybe they're nasty or mean. Or if an activity is unsavoury, maybe it's morally dubious. So this business has unsavoury associations. It's morally suspect, maybe because it's about gambling. Lee employed what could be seen as either verities or convenient cliches about Koreans. A verity is a truth, an established truth. A cliche is something that everyone says, but maybe it's not true, or maybe it's said too much. And this author can't decide, are these things true? Are they verities? Or are they just overdone exaggerations, cliches about Koreans? That they're stubborn, that they have passion, capacity for hard work, shrewd, I mean smart business instincts. And Lee employed this in the service of a substantial melodrama. You might ask, what's the difference between the word melodrama and a drama? Well, a melodrama has lots and lots of the events, maybe in an exaggerated way. It's not too realistic. It's just stuffed full of incredible, interesting things happening. So it's a melodrama. Whereas a drama could be a realistic one. Pachinko, the book, is a page turner meaning you want to read all the way to the end without putting it down. But its attention to the details of character and period, time place, it takes place over eight decades, beginning in 1910, and its steady, unforced narrative drive give it considerable power. It has the feel of something from the 19th century, like the Victorian novels, devoured, consumed assiduously. Devouring a meal, for example. Like the Victorian novels, devoured, by one of its characters, the scholarly educated Noah. By contrast, Pachinko, the TV series, has a thoroughly, deeply contemporary sensibility. As we talked about, do you remember what those words mean? Contemporary means like the modern day present. Sensibility is like taste and feelings. It feels like a, something written for a modern audience. And it works over time, it works especially hard to ingratiate itself with all possible viewers to get all possible viewers on its side, to get them to like it. If you ingratiate yourself, you're getting other people to like you, often in a slightly grovelly way. It works over time to ingratiate itself, to get itself liked by every possible viewer. That desire is evident, is clear, is demonstrated in the opening credit sequence, set to a pop tune, the grassroots anthem, Let's Live for Today. The central cast members in their period costumes, in the costumes from that historical period, but out of character, dance among the pachinko machines, sliding and spinning and mugging for the camera. It's hard to imagine anything more out of tune with Lee's book, anything more different or sounding or seeming different from the book. Of course, the show's makers, the network and cable TV veteran, someone who's got a lot of experience, Sue Hugh from The Whispers of the Terror, who created it and was the lead writer, and the directors Koganada and Justin Chon had no obligation to the book, no duty to keep to the book. So the author is saying they didn't have to keep to the book. And their pachinko has its own significant charms. It wins you over, makes you like it. The credit sequence, with its bright but washed out palettes, remember that word glossy again, bright, is pure eye candy. Eye candy is a great phrase, meaning it looks amazing. Often human beings are sometimes called eye candy. It's like candy or sweets for the eye. And the show looks great overall, especially in the early episodes, directed by Koganada and shot by Florian Hofmeister. The elaborate, detailed reproductions of Korean markets and fishing villages from the early 20th century and of the Korean ghetto. A ghetto is usually a poor place where people from one ethnicity have gathered or been placed in pre-war Osaka before World War II. So the reproductions of all of these things constructed in South Korea and British Columbia are both luxuriously picturesque. They look beautiful. Right? You could take a photo of them and credibly, believably lived in. As visually satisfying costume drama, the period sections of Pachinko are unimpeachable uncriticizable, unquestionable. They're brilliant, you can't touch them. Just like impeaching a president means bringing them down and throwing them out. If something is unimpeachable, it's totally reliable, trustworthy, 
and you shouldn't doubt it at all. So the author is basically saying that when it delves into history and recreates the villages and the ghettos, it looks really believable. Also impossible to argue with is the excellence of the show's large, mostly South Korean and Japanese cast, the actors. The dialogue is predominantly Korean and Japanese, subtitled in separate colours. The main character, the indomitable Sunja, indomitable means unstoppable, just does their own thing in a strong, impressive way, is played with equal grace. Grace is a very interesting word. It's hard to define. Charm, power, to be graceful means like you fully belong. You know who you are and people can tell. It's a wonderful word. It's played with equal grace by the newcomer, Minha Kim, as a young wife and mother, and by the Oscar-winning Yu Jung Hun Minari as a long-suffering matriarch. A matriarch is a woman who leads a family, often a mother or a grandmother. Patriarch is a man who leads a family. Another major South Korean star, Lee Minho, of the beloved K-drama Boys Over Flowers, deploys, uses his charisma, his charm, his personality, in the role of Hansu, Sun Jia's lover, and later her Magwitch-like benefactor. So Magwitch is a character from Great Expectations, Charles Dickens, who helps out the main character Pip in his older life. And a benefactor is someone who helps you out, usually through money or donations. Here we go. Here and there, and this will be the final paragraph of the review that I cover, because there's already so many words that we've learned. Here and there, generally in the moments taken most directly from the book, those actors achieve something more powerful, like the wrenching, heart-wrenching. It twists and turns your heart. To wrench something is to pull and tug something out of someone's hand. Maybe the TV remote was wrenched from your fingers. But if a movie is heart-wrenching or just wrenching, it's pulling at your heart. These actors achieve something powerful, like the wrenching scene between Sunja and her mother, Yang Jin. In Ji Jong, when Sunja leaves Korea, too often though, their work is wrapped in several layers of Hollywood gauze. Gauze is like silk, like a wire mesh. So it's layered in this Hollywood silk, makes it seem a bit too fancy, maybe a bit too fake. The subtlety, the hard to notice detail of their performances gets obscured, covered by the general tendency, general behaviour or the general inclination of the production towards tasteful schmaltz. Tasteful means it's in good taste, but schmaltz is an interesting word, a great word actually to end on, and it's like excessive sentimentality, excessive use of emotions, maybe desperately trying to get the audience to cry or to laugh, but going a bit too far, so it's schmaltz comes across too much like that. So you can tell that overall the critic likes Pachinko, but feels like it goes too far, both visually maybe, and in some of the emotions of the scenes. Gets a bit too schmaltzy. Is maybe a bit too tenuously linked to the book, loosely linked, and does its own thing, catering to a modern audience, to a contemporary sensibility. Please do let me know if you learned any words from this review. And you can even tell me how many words you learn. I certainly really enjoyed reading it and teaching you some of these very, very fun words. Have a wonderful day.